Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to day number 27 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to patch and repair an imported model within the patch workspace. We'll take a look at what the patch workspace is commonly used for, how to extrude a surface model, how to delete faces, and how to stitch a surface model. Many of you that are new to Fusion 360 have probably seen the patch workspace in the drop down list, but you find yourself always reverting to the model workspace or maybe even the cam workspace. So before we dive into patching an imported model, I want to briefly talk about the intention of the patch workspace. The Fusion 360 patch workspace has two main purposes. The first purpose is to patch or fix surface models that are not completely solid or watertight models. In Fusion 360, a surface is a geometry within the software that has no mass or thickness, but still allows users to form and create the shape or style of a model. In Fusion, the surface or surface bodies are considered a patch, hence the patch workspace. Models that have holes to be patched could be imported from another CAD program, or they could be models that were created in a sculpt environment that are not fully closed. The second main purpose of the patch workspace is to create surface models from scratch. In some scenarios, models are best created with the patch environment and then modified further in the parametric or direct modeling environments. This type of CAD workflow is most commonly used in the packaging industry, especially with plastics. You'll see this a lot with complex bottles, vessels, or containers that are easily modeled as surface bodies and then stitched together. For example, take a look at your laundry detergent bottle. If it's one of these standard detergent style bottles, then it's very likely that someone first created this design with a surface model approach in their respective CAD software. If you'd like to see some tutorials on surface modeling, then be sure to let me know in the comments below by commenting that you're interested in learning surface modeling. Now that you know why the patch workspace exists, let's take a look at how to actually use some of its core features. For this demo, I'll be using a file located in your Fusion 360 data panel. Click on the data panel grid icon in the upper left hand corner, then scroll down until you see the sample section. Double click on the basic trainings group and scroll down until you see the number 12 folder hyphen patch. I'll double click on that folder and then I will double click to open the buckle model. Now Fusion 360 sample files are read only, so we'll have to create a copy of the file. Head up to File, Save As, and then you can change the name or the location of the file if you would like. And clicking that blue Save button will create a copy of the file. Now that we have a copy of the file, we can start working on it. The first thing I want you to notice is the type of file in the Fusion 360 browser. Toggle open the component folder and then the bodies folder and take note of the icon here. This icon represents a surface body in Fusion 360. If you ever import a model from somewhere online and you're wondering why you can't use the parametric modeling tools to alter it, then double check to make sure the body is a solid body and not one of these surface bodies. In our case, we don't have a solid body yet. So I'll want to fix that. Looking at the model in the home position, I'll zoom in a bit, and I'm just going to use the view cube to take a look at it from the middle. And you'll notice here right in the middle, there's a huge hole in the middle. So this model is clearly not solid or watertight as we already figured out by looking at the type of body in the Fusion 360 browser. First, we'll want to make sure that we switch to the patch workspace by selecting patch in the workspace dropdown list. Then, we'll want to use a tool that will let us patch this surface hole. And to do this, we'll actually be using the patch command, which you'll see is in the toolbar, or I can select it from the create dropdown list. The first thing the patch dialog box prompts us to do is to select the boundary edges. 
we'll want to select all four edges that go all the way around the hole. And sometimes you'll find that you have to select them one by one, and sometimes you'll be able to select the entire perimeter with just one click. You'll also notice that the preview Fusion is giving us is already showing the surface patch. In some scenarios, you may want to use the group edges command. In our case, we only have four edges, so it's not too bad, but you may run into a model where you have a large number of edges to modify. Selecting this group edges will allow you to make changes to all of the edges at once. We want this surface to be nice and smooth, so I'll make sure the continuity is set to connected. As connected creates a surface with G0 edges, which are edges that are connected at an angle. Just below that, we could select a rail or point if we did have one to reference, which would make this patch even more predictable. For now, just selecting the edge patched the shape very well, so I'll click OK to exit the patch dialog box. Next, I want to make sure that the holes on the sides are also patched. To patch these holes, I'll use the extend command from the modified dropdown list. We're going to want to extend the circle out into the hole where it's perpendicular to the side. Therefore, the first thing I'll do is set the extend type to perpendicular. Then I'll select the outer edge and I'll type in negative 5.153 as I'm just making sure it goes past this other hole. And then I'll click OK in the dialog box. Next, I'll right click and select Repeat Extend and I'll select the inner circle. The extend type should have defaulted to perpendicular, so all you'll need to do is extend this surface out until it's past the outer edge that we just created, as that will make the next step easier for us. Click OK in the dialog box and then we'll need to repeat these exact same steps on the opposite side. I'll look at the model from the other side of the view cube. Then I'll right click and select repeat extend. I'll click on the outer circle and you'll see that it has the last dimension we used as well as the perpendicular set for the extend faces. So all we have to do is click OK. Then I'll right click and select repeat extend once again and this time clicking on the inner edge I'll just want to make sure that the surface is extended enough to go past the previous edge. At this point, we'll want to trim out the excess surface. Because the surface is internal, we'll want to look at the model from a section analysis. If you needed to create a new section analysis, you could select it from the inspect dropdown list. Fortunately for us, the Fusion engineers have went ahead and set one up for this sample file. So all we have to do is click to turn on the light bulb next to the analysis folder in the Fusion 360 browser. I'll zoom in on the left side so it's easier to see, and you'll notice you can see the surface that extends past this edge. Because we don't need this surface, I'll select it and then hit the delete key on the keyboard. You'll also want to do this to the other side, but before that, we'll also want to delete the other edge that sticks out. After deleting this face, I'll pan back over to the right and I'll delete the other two edges that we don't need. I'll go ahead and hide the analysis folder because we're done using the section analysis for now. And if we look at the bottom of the buckle, you'll notice that part of the buckle is messed up. We want this to be one solid piece, so let's zoom in and take a look at it. Looking at each piece, they look like they're closed surfaces. So what we'll want to do in order to make them one piece is delete the interfaces and then we will stitch all of the faces back together. While holding down the shift key, I'll select the right face, the bottom face, and then the left face. And I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard to delete all three faces. Now to rejoin the faces, we'll use the extrude command from the create dropdown menu. I'll select the left edge, and then to get the extrude command to come all the way to the other edge, I'll want to select a corner point. So I'll select this lower corner point, and it looks correct, so I'll click OK in the dialog box. 
If we now look at the Fusion 360 browser, you'll see that we have three different surface bodies. We have two for the extrudes that we created and one for the original surface body. As we talked about in the beginning of this tutorial, our goal is to turn this surface body into one solid body. So at this point, what we'll want to do is stitch all of these surface bodies together. To do this, I'll select the stitch command in the toolbar or from the modify dropdown list. Then I'll first select the two surfaces that we created with the extrude command. And last, I'll select the original surface model. You'll notice the second thing in the dialog box is the tolerance. We'll want to make sure that this is set to 0.01 millimeters so the tolerance is fairly small, making sure we don't have any unusual gaps. We'll also want to make sure that the operation is set to new body, and then we'll click OK to see if this works. Looking over at the Fusion 360 browser again, you'll see that it did in fact work, and we now have one solid body that we can manipulate with either the parametric modeling or the direct modeling modes. You'll also notice in the browser that the body left the original component. So to fix this, simply drag the body back down to the component folder. Last but not least, our section analysis was deleted when the solid body was created because the original surface model no longer exists. If I turn the section analysis back on by selecting it from the inspect dropdown menu, you'll see that we do in fact have a solid and watertight model. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.